With the holidays right around the corner, I know a lot of you out there are looking to either gift or receive a brand new Cricut machine. So today, we are gonna be creating some cool and fun Cricut crafts using two of the machines in my collection, the Maker 3 and the Cricut Explore Air 2. Both of these machines are so much fun to work with and I've had them for a while. And so I'm gonna talk you through a couple of different things so you can decide which one of these machines might be the one that you want to pick up. So my name is Lacey and welcome to our space. Let's get into creating some crafts. We're gonna start out with my Cricut Explore Air 2. I have had this Cricut Explore Air 2 since 2019. And if you are an oldie but goodie on my channel, you know the first one I received was in a blue color, but I loaned that one out to a charity and they graciously returned a brand new one in the box. And so I have this one in the color Daybreak. As you can see on this machine, it has a on off button at the top, a dial in the middle for you to pick the materials you can use. You also have a custom setting that I keep mine on. And then it also has a button here on the far left to load your stuff, a Cricut Simple button to play and a pause button. And then on the other side, we have the button to open the machine, a storage compartment in the back, and then a little compartment to use the cartridges if you have them from your first Explore machine. It also comes with a light grip mat and a Cricut pen, which I don't show here. And on the bottom of this machine, there's two compartments for extra storage. And the Cricut Explore Air 2 cuts 100 different types of material, which include vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, also known as iron-on, cardstock, paper, even fabrics. So let's jump right in and make our first project, which is here. I made this holiday home decor piece that says Merry Christmas out of some craft paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. I ended up picking up four sheets of this paper and they were actually, I do believe, four for a dollar. Next, I loaded the paper on my mat and put it to my machine, and then I went into Cricut Design Space. Here, I hit images, and I searched for Christmas tree. I wanted a simple Christmas tree, so I found this one here and added it to my mat. Then I'm resizing it here, and I'm going to get it to the size so I can have a couple of them cut out with my craft paper. Then I go up to the upper right-hand corner in my design space and click duplicate and drag the second one over next to the first one. I had a little space in between the two trees though, so I decided to add a smaller tree to the set. Now I end up actually changing that one out, but then I click on the T for text and I wanted to write out Merry Christmas for this DIY and so I did that. Now I am going to search down in Cricut's fonts to pick a different font because I want one to look a little more Christmassy for me. And once I find that, I'm going to click on it and change that font. But this, as you can see, it's too big. So I am resizing it down so it fits onto my mat with my trees. After I do that, I know I want to cut out all of these pieces together on one mat. So I'm going to change them all to the color black. You can have them any color you want, but if they're all the same color, they'll cut out on the same mat. Then I'm going to put a box around the entire thing and hit attach at the bottom right corner so it keeps my project together and then hit make it. So once I hit make it, it sends it over to my machine and it says, these are the materials you need to load to your machine. I'm gonna be cutting with a fine point blade and I am just gonna hit the load button here and let the machine do its magic after I press the play button. I did speed up this footage for you guys, yes, but this machine cuts out so smoothly and so quickly and since it is just craft paper, this was done in quite a jiffy. I don't even think it took three minutes to cut this out. And it shows your progress on your computer, tablet, or smartphone because you can use all of those via Bluetooth to cut out these pieces. After it was all done cutting out, 
I took my mat out and I like to flip my mat over and peel the excess away. And this is what I am left with. So now we are gonna put the rest of this DIY together. I have some wood stems from Dollar Tree and some barbecue skewers also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be taking these little wood stems and putting the wood skewers down inside of them. To do this, I'm using my RYOB drill and I just put on a drill bit that's the same size as the wood screws and I drill down in there. Now, if you don't have a drill, you could do this with a Dremel too and drill around just to make a hole or you can just glue it straight down on the flat side. I'm putting the pointy side in there and I'm going to add a little hot glue to glue that down. But first, I'm going to go ahead and take off my trees. Again, I'm flipping my mat over and peeling the mat away from my project. That ensures that my project doesn't curl up that much and it stays nice and flat. I'm going to start off with the trees here. And as you can see, I already took the wood skewer and put it underneath where the star is and I glued it down. And then I'm just taking some hot glue with my Ryobi hot glue cordless gun and I'm going to be gluing the stars together. This is why I cut out two of the trees at each time so I can put them together. Now these trees are kind of identical for cutting out and putting them together. If your trees look different on different sizes, I would suggest that you flip one of the trees over in design space so they meet up if you're gonna do this. Or if you don't mind that it is just white on the back, you don't need to do two trees and back them up together. I decided to back them up together to show you how easy this is. So now I'm just taking some hot glue and putting on the edges that I didn't glue down right on where they come out on the sides, as you can see here, and then gluing it down. And that is as simple as this is. And it turns out to be a really nice little tree that will stand on its own. As you can see, I have a second one that I'd already done. And I already drilled the holes in all of my little wood stems because nobody really wants to watch me do that on camera. Now for these smaller trees, I did the same process, though I cut down some of the wood skewers because I want all of my trees to be at different heights. The two that are already sitting there are at, actually at different heights because I just moved the stem down a little bit further. But these, I need to cut the stem down. And I show you here how I just put a bead of glue down. I don't put the wood skewer at the very top so I can close the top of it and then I line these pieces up. And here they are all done. I actually found a couple of other um, images in Design Space that you could find yourself too and made a couple of other trees. So now I'm also taking from Dollar Tree this wood sign. It's white on one side but blue on the other side with some lettering. So I'm going to use some Waverly white chalk paint and just a paint over it. And then I'm going to use the Merry Christmas that I cut out at the bottom with a little Mod Podge and put down these letters. Now, since this is craft paper, I'm not gonna use any Cricut transfer paper just in case it would tear with it. I'm just going to put these down by hand and line them up by my eye. If you find this difficult, you could always draw a pencil mark at the bottom or put them, you can't really put them all at the very bottom because you have a Y it would hang off but you could erase the paste pencil mark later or cover it up with a little white paint if you need a line to follow. I'm just doing this by hand and I'm showing you that I'm putting the Mod Podge down as I go and then I'm going to cover the entire Christmas part with Mod Podge to make sure that it stays on. I also had one of the little trees left over and I cut off the top of it and added it to the end and I'm going covering that with Mod Podge as well. So that's what that looks like and we're going to let that sit and dry. Well actually I don't think I let that sit and dry. We are going to go ahead and I'm going to place out where I want my trees to go. I don't want them to touch each other, but I want them to be spaced out nicely. And I made six and I only ended up using five all together. And I'm just going to glue each one to the top with a little hot glue. So this is what that looked like. I didn't think you needed to see me glue down each individual tree, but look at how cute that is already. Though, you guys know, if you've been on my channel for a while, I'm extra. I 
think it needs a little bit more. So I'm taking some reindeer moss and I'm going to put it around all of the trees at the bottom because you can see a little hot glue on a couple of them. And I want to cover that up. Plus, I think it just adds a little bit extra. So once I get that all done, this is what it looks like. I thought I was going to leave it like that. But as you can see on the front side, I decided to add these tiny little glitter bows. These are from Dollar Tree also. I think they came in like a pack of 15. And I decided to do one red, one green, and alternate the colors. And this is my final project. Now on to DIY number two. For this one, we are going to be making this tray that I made for my little brother, utilizing Cricut's Smart Vinyl. Now, this vinyl is for machines that cut without a mat, but you can use it on a mat. And because I'm out of black vinyl normally, I'm going to be cutting it and putting it on my light grip mat. Then I'm opening Cricut Design Space and I'm going to type in for a circle wreath. I wanted a border around that and I really like the first one that came up. So we are choosing that one. I'm resizing it and I'm gonna change the color to black because everything on this is gonna be black and I want it all to print out on the same mat. After I resize it to fit my project, I'm typing in monogram W. I really wanted to do a monogram thing for my little brother and so I placed this W inside the circle and resized it to fit what I want my project to be and then I'm making sure that they're going to sit exactly where I want them on the project as well. I really like the line in the middle of it because I knew I could add text so I click on text next and I type out his name. And once I get that and I put it down, I decided I want the W in Warren to kind of look like the W in the monogram. So I'm searching for a font that looks close to that. And I'm going to go through a couple of them here, but there are tons of fonts to choose from. And even you can import fonts from your own computer. So once I get the one that I really like, that one was definitely not it, and I get it in there, I'm also going to space out the letters. There is a button at the top for letter spacing, so it will fill across to the ends of the W here once I get it exactly where I want it. And I am going to change that color to black so it will all print out on the same mat. After I get all of that done, we're going to go ahead and put a box around the entire thing to make it one project and hit attach at the bottom right and send it over our machine to be cut out on our vinyl so we can make it. So first the machine loads it and then it starts cutting it. I did speed up this footage here because no one wants to watch my machine just cut out vinyl, but this cuts out nice and smoothly on the mat. And I turn it over my project once I take it off of my mat and remove my excess vinyl. Since this is such a big project, I can mostly do this by hand. I didn't have much of an issue at all removing or weeding as we say with Cricut Vinyl to take the excess out so we can get to our project. But for the smaller portions, I'm using my Cricut weeding tool to take out like the inside of the A and the E. And there's also some little spots inside the reef. Not every spot, but I'm going to be removing all of the excess pieces that need to be removed out. And here's what it looks like. I love this and I love the fact that I created the entire thing in Cricut Design Space. So now I have this thrifted piece of glass. It's very smooth on the edge. It's not sharp anywhere. And I have these little handles that I'm taking out to show you here that I had left over from another project and they're from Home Depot. I'm going to take some Cricut transfer tape and cut it to size and place it on top of my project so I can transfer it over onto this glass. Now this glass is not perfect. It actually has a couple scratches in it, but my little brother will not mind at all. I had it in my stash from a thrifted project and I thought it would be perfect for this tray. So I 
just rolled my transfer tape on as you saw there and I'm using my large scraper to make sure that it attaches to the transfer tape and I'm going over it several times. I did speed up this footage a little but I wanted you to be able to see that I'm really getting in there and getting the entire project. Then I flip it over and I make sure that I do the same thing on the back so it will be easy to transfer over. Now the first time I did this I struggled with getting my project on the transfer tape. I think everyone does. If you didn't, I uh, lucky you, but don't fret. This is not a hard process at all. You just then turn it over and remove the backing off of it nice and slow. And it didn't take me very long at all. It is sped up a little. In the places that it might have stuck a little, I just pushed down and it came right off. After I did that, I just put the backing underneath my glass so I would have a grid to try to get the sun straight. And as you can see, I was measuring it there to make sure that I could put it right in the middle of where that glass is. And it would look, you know, as perfect as I could get it. I'm sure it's off by a hair here or there, but I really like it. And I already know that he is going to like this. I'm taking my scraper and I'm pressing down to make sure it adheres really, really well. And then you just pull off the transfer tape and your project's done. And as you can see, one of the R's wanted to stick, but it was an easy fix. Put it back, scrape it back down, and it works perfectly. Now I'm just deciding where I want to put my handles on this. I want to put them on either side of the W. And I kind of had already measured it out a little. And I'm going to adhere these on with some Gorilla Epoxy. You have to mix this together. It's two different sides. So I'm putting it in a little dish. And then you push down on the stoppers and they both come out together. I put a glove on one hand because I tend to flick things. So I didn't want to get it on my skin. And I mixed them together already. And I'm just putting them on the ends. And then we're going to stick them on to our tray. I do this standing up so I can look straight down and hopefully get them as even as possible. But that's all it takes for this DIY. I already did the other side off camera and look at how cool this is. I let the epoxy dry overnight and you can actually, with epoxy on glass, pick this up. Now it is not dishwasher safe or food safe, so I made it so he could put it in his bathroom and put his aftershaves and cologne on if he like, maybe drop his watch there, or he could use it in like a man cave and set like alcohol bottles or shot glasses or something on there. Um, anything that you put on there, you have to know that this, even though it's permanent vinyl, I would not put food on there and I would not put it in the dishwasher. So now on to DIY number three. For this, we are going to jump over to my Cricut Maker 3. This machine can cut up to 300 different materials and it cuts without a mat with smart materials. It also can cut up to 12 feet long with smart materials and two times faster than the regular maker with smart materials. Plus, you can still cut with a mat and use all the Cricut tools if you already have the maker that can go with your Cricut maker. I love this machine and I've used it a lot. And as you can see, I also have my logos stuck to this machine. I also love that the top of this machine and the Cricut Explore 3 also can hold your tablet and stuff at the top. So right here, you can tell there's no dial on this machine. It's different than my Explore Air 2. It has an on off button, the load button, and the cricket symbol button has changed to a play button and you still have your pause button on the side. Across the top, like I mentioned a minute ago, you can put your tablet or your smartphone up there while you're doing your project. And I love that about this machine. If you were going to get the Cricut Explore 3, it also now has that app option as well. And just like the Explorer Air 3, we have a compartment tray at the bottom for tools and things. And I have my Cricut pen at the bottom. So now on to this next project, which is acrylic. It is a seven and a half by 10 inch piece of acrylic that we are going to be engraving on with my Cricut Maker 3. Yes, you can engrave with the engraving tool with your Cricut Maker 3. So I went back into images and I click Christmas tree as you guys can see again and I'm gonna pick an image that is just drawn out in black and white once I get that on my um, canvas I then decide to put some text around it Merry Christmas again 
and I am going to pick a font that I use for Lacy Space called Great Vibes and put it above it. But I thought it'd be really cool to curve it down around the tree. So on the top of your toolbar, you can hit the curve and curve it as far as you want. As you can see, I'm going up and down trying to decide where I like it. But you guys also know that I am extra and I thought, I have a lot of room on this acrylic, so let's engrave a couple of other things on it as well. It's a Christmas tree, so I typed in presents, as you can see, and I'm looking for black and white drawn presents. That's what I'm going to put underneath it. So I picked a few that I liked, and I'm going to resize them once I get them underneath the tree. So here I'm clicking on this one, and I've already added a few other and I just thought it would be really nice. Now, the simpler the engraving, the easier this will be. So I'm just going to resize them and make sure they fit within my project and put them underneath the tree. But you guys also know how extra I can be. And I decided I'd like to put a couple stars in there. So I really like this star, David, that came up first. And I'm just going to grab it and duplicate several of them and size them to different sizes and put them up around the top of the tree. Now, at the top of your screen, it's gonna say basic cut next to what is happening with this tree. You are going to change that to engrave in that button because we are engraving and that's what I did right there. And you can see it made the tree lighter because it's going to cut it out a little different. Then I put a box around the entire thing like we did everything else so it kept my project together and I hit make it. Now I moved this project to the center of the screen because in order to engrave my acrylic, I need to center it on my mat and so my project needs to be there. Then I hit continue and picked acrylic. This is two millimeter acrylic so I make sure that's picked. Also, I'm now going to prep my project. Now my acrylic was damaged, it has a scratch on it. I don't mind it at all because I'm making this for myself. But in order to use this and to engrave it, we are going to be putting this on Cricut Strong Grip Mat, the purple one. And this is easy for me to put it in the middle because as you can see, it has points on the middle of each side of this. So I can stick it at six and six, press it down and make sure that it is centered on my mat. And excuse my mat because it's dirty because I used it to cut some wood before. But Cricut suggests that you take some painter's tape or masking tape, not duct tape. It will mess up your mat and your project. But painter's tape and tape your project down so it does not move even on the strong gut mat. So here I am then taking my engraving tool and putting it in slot B to make sure that my project is ready to go as my machine told me. I load my machine and it measures it. And I'm showing you here with my finger, these little white rollers are normally across that whole silver bar and spots. You wanna push them all the way to the right before you hit play so they won't get in the way of you engraving your piece. I know this is a lot of information, but this was so much fun to do. I thought for sure that this was going to take a very long time to cut out. I did speed up this footage for you guys, but I have to tell you from the time that it actually started engraving to the time that it was finished was not really that long. I think it took just under 10 minutes and I love this project so very much. Now, if my acrylic hadn't already been damaged. It was in my stash. It, it had some paper on it and a little bit of plastic, but it had been damaged already. This project would be pristine and such a great thing to give to someone. So as I was making it for myself, I did not mind and I did not have another piece of acrylic to use, but this machine cuts it out so perfectly and I'm in love with how it turns out. Now, because it is engraving, it is removing little pieces of the acrylic. So you will have that on your project and you will have that in the base of your machine. To clean your machine once this is done, you can either blow it out with a little air or wipe it down with a slightly damp cloth, not wet at all. I'd actually not even have it as wet as a baby wipe would get or just a soft cloth and you could probably get rid of it. To get it off of my project, 
I am taking the excess off with some Cricut transfer tape that I had already used before. I save my transfer tape if it's not, if it's still sticky and it's not a mess. And this took it all off easily. If it doesn't come off for you like that, you can use a soft cloth and wipe it off. So now I am showing you here that I put it on a piece of red cardstock just so you could see the design and you could see where it was already scratched. If it wasn't already scratched, this would be perfect. I'm taking a piece of like greenery garland that I had in my stash. I kind of made it into like a little bowl, you can see there, and I'm covering up where the circle was because I'm not going to be hanging this and where a couple of the scratches are. If I hadn't had the scratches on it, I probably would have just left it alone, but I'm not sure that's true either. The extra me always wants to adorn all of my projects. So I also had this little curly Q silver stuff. So I glued a couple of pieces of that in and I had the acrylic ball uh, from the pick that I put on there. I put one on initially and then I decided, hey, I could add a couple more, so I did. So there's three of them that are gonna be put on there all together. But then I stopped myself and that's all I decided to do to this. So it's like three little acrylic holly balls with a little bit of greenery and a little bit of sparkle. So next, I have this little light up box that came with some other acrylic that I had. And it is remote control and changes colors to different colors. You could also have settings where it can fade in and out. The colors can change on their own or you can leave it one color. It's a really little fun gadget. I got it from Amazon. They have tons of them. If you put in acrylic light ups, you can find it there because I've had these for a very long time and I don't know exactly which one it is. But I'm going to put my stand, which will not stand on its own, up on this, but I'm gonna add a couple of little dots of Gorilla Hot Glue and stick them onto the side. You can barely see them. Hold it the entire time until it dries and then this project will be done. It is so cute and I love, love the fact that with my Cricut Maker 3, I can engrave acrylic. Look at how cool that is. So this is the part that has no damage to it. And then when you go up, there are the little scratches that were where the Merry Christmas was. But I think this would be a perfect gift for anyone. I would love to get this. And you can do it for any season. You could do it for birthdays. You can put names on there. You could just work with the acrylic and see what you're able to engrave. And I know I'm gonna be making more of these because I have a ton more of the little disc at my house that light up and I cannot wait to do that. So now for our last DIY, number four, we're gonna be doing some smart iron on and glitter iron on in red. It's also known as heat transfer vinyl. So for this, we're doing it without a mat and we're gonna be utilizing also Cricut roll holder. I went into Design Space and I typed out my daughter's name, which is Dominique, and I'm going to change the font to Great Vibes again. And I'm also going to add some other words to this, as you can see here. But in order to do Iron On, you need to flip these words over, so you need to make sure Mirror is on over on your left-hand side of the screen. And then I'm going to pick which material I'm using, which is Smart Glitter Iron On. And then I put my iron on into my roll holder and load it in my machine. It measures it to make sure I have enough material. And then it asks me to hit the play button to cut it out. I did speed up this footage as well, but when it's done and it wants you to unload, this is built in with a cutter so you can cut your actual roll and then unload it. So next, in order to use Iron On, we're gonna be using this beautiful ribbon for this so we can personalize a present and I'm going to be using my Easy Press too. So first of all, we're gonna to go to the heat guide to, that's going to tell us what temperature my Easy Press 2 needs to be on and for how long I need to do this project. I pick Easy Press 2 and the material that I'm going to be using, which is Smart Glitter Iron On, and then the material that it's going to be going on, which I pick Cotton Poly Blend because I really didn't know what this was. And it tells me that it needs to be 330 degrees for 30 seconds. Now, I did a test piece 
and I actually then cut off this piece. It states that you should heat it up for five seconds before, but I didn't want to heat this ribbon too long. So I did that already. And then I'm going to be placing my daughter's name down on this piece of ribbon. Once I get it where I want lined up with like the cream color that's there, and my machine is ready by seeing that this gr green C is lit. It's red if it's not ready. I put it straight up and down on it and then I press the start button for it to calculate the number of time. Then I take it straight up and off of it and then let the piece cool completely before I take off the coating. And as you can see, I already wrapped a present with some brown wrapping paper not to take away from this ribbon and then just glue that piece underneath and now i'm going to glue the bow that i made it's just a simple bow the box is actually empty i just want to show you how you can personalize christmas presents or birthday presents anniversary whatever and put someone's name actually on the ribbon how cute is that for an idea how many of us have had little girls or seen little girls who love ribbon sashes? You could put their name across it and they can do dress up with it. I even did my daughter Chloe's name on this one. So that is it for this video. I want to thank Cricut so much for sponsoring this video. I will link their website down below in my description box. So you can head over there and check out all of the machines that they have to offer and figure out which one is right for you. I also want to thank you guys so much for watching and liking and always sharing my videos. And if you are not a subscriber here at Lazy Space yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, become a subscriber and hang out with us for a while so you can check out all of the other DIYs I have coming up for you for this holiday season. I will also be linking down below some of my other Cricut videos if you are looking for inspiration. And if you have any questions for me about either of these machines, feel free to leave them in the description box down below. So that is it and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye loves!